Hey, what's going on? It's the Friday Faith Philip, Senior Pastor Derek Galloway here. I'm so excited you're with me this morning. We want to make sure that you have an opportunity to start your week in the right way. This is where we start our uh, faith for our weekend. Friday kicks off our Faith Philip. If you've never watched the Faith Philip before, it's where we go to our website and we take a look at what the Word of God is showing. And then we tie that in uh, with whatever outreach event we have for Saturday, and we culminate it on Sunday. We encourage you, please, man, please serve. You don't have a church home, or if you're looking for somewhere uh, that you can hear the Word of God directly verified and directly divided rightly to you, we want to encourage you to join us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. We're at 107 East Beard between State and Salina in the beautiful city of Syracuse. We are the Connected Christian Church, and we're a church committed to connecting our community to the compassion of Christ. So we want to get into the Word of God, but first we need to get into uh, the prayer. Now, if you're following along with us on our faithlife.org website, you'll see that our text this morning is coming from Genesis chapter 1, verse number 28. This is also contained uh, as a section in, in the book, Greater Focus which is available on Amazon, barnesandnobles.com, Kindle, Nook, uh, iPad, all of those platforms. It's available now. It's $20. We also have copies available at our ministry, so you'll be able to see it. But the Bible talks about operating in dominion. And when we operate in dominion, you'll see this, and God blessed them. You'll see it there. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on earth. We're going to take that apart, and we're going to learn what it means to operate in dominion, operating in dominion. God gave us power to have control over the things of our life. We can operate in areas of dominion if we know how. So we're going to go ahead and pray, and we're going to get into the lesson, and I want you to stick with us. Take this opportunity as we give you our weekly announcements to uh, invite somebody to our faith fill up. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. You'll see the subscribe button uh, for YouTube come up if you're on our YouTube channel. We encourage you to like this if it speaks to you. Share it if you wanted to speak to somebody else. And subscribe if you want not only our faith fill ups, but our Sunday worship services and our Tuesday night transformation Bible studies. All of those are content that when you subscribe to our channel, either Get Connected SYR on our Facebook profile, or if you subscribe on our YouTube channel, you'll have access to all of that. Plus an extensive archive library of information going all the way back, over 250 videos. You want to be able to take a look at that, and you want to be able to find something that is going to speak to your heart, speak to your situation, and speak to your mind. So we're going to pray, and I encourage you, please, ma'am, please, sir, take the time to share. Let's pray. Father, we thank you yet again for another opportunity to come here and bless these your airwaves. They do not belong to us, God, and they no longer belong to the prince of the air known as the enemy. He attempts to try to control what goes into our ear gates, and we negate that with the power of your word. Now, Father, we ask that you will bless those that are here right now. Let them have an ear to hear, a heart to listen, and a mind to do better. We honor you, Lord. We ask you to open every heart, mind, and ear for this purpose. And this purpose is yours and not ours. You get the glory out of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, listen, I want to give you a couple of our quick announcements as they come up. And we're going to move forward from there. So what I need you to do, stick and stay. Don't go away. Watch our announcements, and we'll be right back. Tuesday Night Transformation is our midweek Bible study. All are encouraged to either visit us in person at 107 East Beard or online at Get Connected SYR. Our Friday Faith Phillips come on 7 a.m. 
on Facebook Live, YouTube.com. We ask you to like, share, and subscribe to get updated content from the Connected Church. Earth Day is coming up Saturday, April 23rd, 2022. This is a time for us to care for what God has provided for us. Everybody can participate. See Deacon Sandy or Sister Brenda Judge for more updated information and to get your assignment. Baptism Sunday is coming up April 24th. At the end of the 10 a.m. service, we encourage all that would connect with one of the leaders of the church and we'll get you more information. Our hand-in-hand -hand outreach connecting our community to the compassion of Christ. Saturday, May 7th, 11 a.m., we meet at the church and make our way to Sankofa Park. In June, the citywide marriage conference revival for better or worse no for real more information to come this is going to be an awesome time of relationship building make sure you tell a friend to tell a friend and these have been your announcements hey i'm glad you made it back with us so listen we said we're going to go into genesis the first chapter verse number 28 if you have your bibles your devices or whatever you're going to be using for the day i encourage you to take a look at this the bible says for us to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. Let's take that apart. So being fruitful and multiply, as with the animal kingdom, humanity was created to be fertile. We think about this in a way of sexual reproduction, but that's not all God is talking about. When he begins to talking about for us to be able to multiply, let us look at it from a spiritual connotation. We just celebrated the resurrected Savior. We just celebrated that on this past Sunday. We're going to be talking about a couple of great things coming up, but we want to make sure that we don't use the Savior's gift and in vain. We don't let it be in vain. So when we're talking about being fruitful, that means we ought to be able to produce fruit. An apple produces an apple. An orange produces an apple. I mean, it produces an orange. Now, what I need you to realize is this, that a Christian produces other Christians. So when we're given the responsibility of being fruitful, there ought to be fruit that comes from your relationship with Christ Jesus. And when it talks about multiplication, you should go into the highways and the byways, and you should be willing to preach, proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Irregardless, which is not a word, but it is a powerful statement, regardless of title, regardless of gender, regardless of all of the things that we sometimes uses excuses to hold us back. If you have relationship with Christ, you have a responsibility to not only show forth fruit in that particular circumstance, but also to multiply. You have a responsibility to share the gospel, thusly bringing other individuals into the kingdom of God. So when the final trumpet sounds and Jesus returns, we need to be able to make sure that everyone has had an opportunity. It didn't say everyone had to accept, but everyone has to have an opportunity to hear the word of God for themselves and to make that decision, for God I live and for God I die. So we wanna make sure that we're being fruitful, again, evidence of fruit of our relationship with Christ Jesus, and that we're multiplying, we are making other Christians. It goes further to say that we ought to subdue it and rule over it. I know there are times it seems like we're vastly outnumbered by the ways of the world. That there's times where we think we are, uh, you know, we're mighty in number, but the world seeks to tear us back down. I'm here to tell you on this morning and to encourage it, to encourage you that you have the ability to subdue those things around you. As soon as the enemy rears his ugly head, you have the ability to subdue him. How do you do that? It comes from the Word of God. How do you hear the Word of God? you got to build your faith. How do you build your faith? Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the Word of God, how should they hear unless they have a preacher? You need somebody to be able to speak into your life. We can read the Holy Text by ourselves, but do you understand it? I'm reminded of the Ethiopian eunuch who was in the courts of Candace, which is a verifiable female leader from the uh, lower regions of Nubia, a powerful, powerful African woman. Now, they had Christianity already, 
So here's this eunuch, and he's sitting on top of a chariot, which indicated he was a man of learning, and he was a man of authority, and he was a man of power. And as he's reading the Holy Writ, he was asked by Deacon Stephen, if you remember the advent of the deacons, Acts the 8th chapter, go ahead and read it, and you'll see why that's a necessary office, and what the real responsibility is. As he was talking to Brother Stephen, Deacon Stephen, and Stephen asked him, do you know what it is that you're reading? He said, how can I know unless some man teach me? In order to build your faith, in order to have the power to subdue, in order to have the power to rule, it comes from knowing your proper position through the Bible. How is your relationship with Christ? Do you know him? Do you have a passing relationship? Or is he your rock and your foundation? We know that we'll say that God is my rock, hope, and our foundation. But do you really believe it? Have you gotten to a point where you understand that your hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness? Have you gotten to a point where you understand that the power to subdue, to control, not just those things around you, but can we take it even more simple? You have the power to subdue your carnality and your mindset. You can regulate the things you need to be able to regulate based on the word of God. Yes, my friends, you are in a position where God has given you power. How do I know? Paul wrote a letter to a church in Ephesus. And when you begin to look at what was written, he was explaining that there would be power that comes from us. Ephesians, the third chapter, verse number 20. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can hope or ask according to the power that works in us. So he's telling you that you have the power. Your power comes from relationship with God. Your power is designed to help you subdue not only those areas of your life that there seem to be problems in, but also when it comes to your own carnality, your own fleshliness, your own inability to do this on your own. The word says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If you recognize that the strengthening that you need only comes from God, that's where you get the ability to change and transform everything. But again, you have to be fruitful. There ought to be evidence of your relationship. You have to multiply. You have to make other Christians. You have to go out and share. There's somebody waiting for your testimony. There's somebody waiting for you to share with them what God brought you through. There's somebody waiting for you at this moment to be able to look and say, I yield, I yield. What must I do to be saved? But if they don't see any fruit of your labor, if they don't see any multiplication process, they're not going to be able to gravitate towards you. And here's the sad thing. Many of us really believe that we're in a position where we're doing God's work. And in all honesty, we're like a hamster on the treadmill. We're going around circles and circles. The song says, you got me going in circles. And the problem becomes, that while we're on that circle going around and around, you end up not getting anywhere. You end up not getting anything done except getting more and more tired. So please, ma'am, please, sir, recognize that you've been called to be fruitful. You've been called to multiply. You've been called to subdue. And you've been called to rule. Let me explain this to you. These terms indicate an active power or rule exerting physical force or effort. You have an active power. That active power gives you the authority to be able to step out, proclaim those things that are not as though they already are. And as you begin to proclaim them, you begin to see the manifested blessings. When you walk in the blessings of the Lord, your finances, your faith, your family, these are only the manifestations of the prayers that you've already offered up. When you offer up prayers from a good place, when you offer up prayers from a holy place, when you offer up these red-hot fervent prayers, they avail much. The Bible says that the red-hot 
the fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. So as you begin to offer up these prayers, you begin to see the manifestation of what you pray for. Your health gets better because you say, God, help me to stay my hand and turn down my plate for those things that I don't need, those things that are, are, are contrary to your will and are contrary to your way. When you begin to pray for your family members, things get better in your marriages because you're not chasing each other, you're chasing God. And you'll be able to find your spouse's heart if your spouse is saved in God. And the more you chase after God, the more, the better your relationship gets. Now, here's what I gotta tell you. I'm going through some marriage counseling things right now, some pre marriages you have to understand that when you're going through everything, what's most important is the relationship that the two of you have with God. It's not about anything else. The three-strand cord, three cord is not easily broken. We recognize that, but you have to recognize it. So let's understand what the Bible says. You've been called to have authority. You've been called to subdue those issues in your life. You've been called for all of that because you've been set aside for such a time as this. This is your time. This is your moment. This is your day. Today is a day like you've never seen before. I need you to tap yourself on your chest, in your living room, in your kitchen, driving down the street. Don't let nobody worry about whether or not you look crazy and say, this is the day. This is my day. And I will live the best day of my life. The song that I love so much says, today will be the best day of your life. You'll get your joy back and you'll get it today. So understand that when you operate in the power that God has already given you, he's given you power to be fruitful. He's given you power to multiply. He's given you power to subdue and he's given you power to rule. He's given you power over all the things that God has created. From days one through five, he gave, he, he created life. He created fish in the sea. He created birds in the sky. He created animals on the earth. He created things that we don't even recognize because the Bible talks about the rock and the ziz and we begin to talk about Leviathan, things that we don't have the frame of reference for, but the Bible talks about the creation of a fish so big that it was able to swallow a man whole. You don't believe me? Go ahead and read the book of Jonah. And as you begin to look at it, it tells you about the immensity and the enormity of what God created. So as you begin to look at this, he's giving you dominion power over all of these things. The problem is we're so used to operating in less than that we don't understand the power that we do have. I'm encouraging you today, please, ma'am, please, sir, get your power in order. We're going to be talking this over the next four weeks from the mindset of grow up. We're talking about the stages of the life cycle of a Christian, going from baby to parent. It's going to be an awesome time, and what it will do, prayerfully, as we're in this development quarter, this is the quarter of development, development. Last month, or last quarter, we dealt with deliverance. This quarter, we're dealing with development, and next quarter, we're going to talk about building your determination, but for right now, we're in the development stage, and one of the things that you have to be mindful of is you have to be able to develop power to overcome the things of your life. You gotta have power to live right, power to love right, power to do right when you would wanna do wrong. The power that you need for control of your life is contained in your relationship. So what I need you to do, what I need you to understand is I need you to be of this heart. Hear me clearly, you have power. And when that power comes, you can change. Until you have the power to change, everything will remain the same. Now, I gotta share this with you uh, by way of understanding and announcement that there's nothing that you have, nothing that you're going to receive, nothing that God is gonna bless you with that's gonna be too much for you to have. God wants you to have a life full of abundance. And if you can have abundance, if you recognize that God wants to bless you, then you're in the best position possible. Hey, this has been your Friday Faith Fill Up. Go out, be powerful today. Let God use you in a mighty way. Let him touch the hearts of those that would normally not hear them. Let them be like the Philippian jailer when he said, I yield, I yield. What must I do to be saved? And once you get them to that point, go out, 
and repeat. Go out and operate in your gift. Operate in what God has given you. Operate in your anointing. Don't let anybody make you dim your light to make them shine greater. You are fearfully and wonderfully, wonderfully made. You are the righteousness of God. You are His creation. And if you have power to subdue the rest of the creation, you have power to subdue you as His creation. So listen, I hope you enjoyed Friday Faith Fill Up. Uh, again, Senior Pastor Derek Galloway, pay attention to the announcements. I want to make sure that you bring a friend and that you tell a friend that you tell a friend. Let everybody know, let Lottie Dottie and everybody know that we are in service 10 a.m. on Sunday, 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday Night Transformation. We want to see you there. Let's go. Father, we thank you right now for another opportunity to come here on a Friday and preparing ourselves for the weekend. We don't need to turn up. We just need to turn up with God. And we thank you for that opportunity. Now, Father, bless everyone who's been here. Bless everyone who will catch us on the flip side, on the replay, and just continue to bless our ministry. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hey, listen, thank God. I'm so excited we finished this one out. Uh, I will see you on Sunday. But actually, I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow is our Earth Day cleanup. I want to see you. We're going we're gonna to start, get started with assignments and gloves and everything else. Uh, no later, no later than uh, 10 a.m. We're going to make sure we have our assignments, our placements, have a light refreshment. And then we're going to hit the streets and we're going to clean up our area. We're going to make sure that the power that we have for Dominion is, still, is, uh, is done in a clean place. All right, so please, man, please, sir, you be blessed on this, uh, on this morning. Have a great day. I'll talk to you tomorrow.